Right, this particular recipe is one I've made many, many times. Now it's Danish pastry. Once I've made the Danish pastry, I'm gonna show you how to make chocolate twists with it afterwards. So obviously it's in two parts. Initially, these are my core ingredients. You have your strong flour, you have your milk, sugar, salt, fast action yeast, eggs and water. And I have my butter that gets folded into or laminated into the Danish pastry. It's a bit fiddly. When I say that, you're basically making a dough and then you're folding butter into it. That's all you're doing in layman's terms. Now to start with, we need to develop the dough. In the bowl, I have my strong flour, into which my little bit of salt, fast action yeast, some sugar, caster sugar. Then I have my two eggs. This is the main difference actually between sort of croissant and Danish. Croissant dough, for instance, would just use water. It's got salt in there, sugar, and water, and that's it. Whereas Danish, it does have milk in there, it has a little bit more sugar, and it has eggs, so it's enriched. So it's slightly different to a, a croissant. Now all that's left is a little splash of milk, and then water to mix. Now, to start with, get your spoon in there. Give it a mix round. Now normally, when you're doing a recipe, and I'll say 50% liquid, 55% liquid, for instance, 500 grams of flour would have 250 water, it makes it 50% liquid. Um, so 250 ml, 250 grams, would be 50% hydration. Now because you've added the eggs, you've added 260 grams, so you've added 120 of liquid already in the form of an egg. So you cut back on your liquid, that's the generic thing you do on all recipes. And you can see this is still quite dry, a little bit of water in there, turn that round. Trying to gather up all that flour down at the bottom. Presumably you could do this in a mixer. You could do this in the mixer with a with a hook. Yeah, and it is far easier to do it in the mixer. Just I'm showing people who haven't got mixers how you do it. So you basically fold up from the bottom and tuck in, turn it over, just incorporating all the ingredients in there. Fold it over, tuck it in and it starts to form a ball pretty quickly. Folding the edges in. So you end up with a dough like that, which is pretty much formed. You just gotta make it a little bit smoother by working it and just rolling it up, flattening it down and rolling it up. You need to do this for about five, ten minutes and it'll just get smoother and smoother as you do it. Just building up the gluten. This is a, a bread flour, but it's an enriched dough as well because it's got sugar in there, it's got eggs in it and it's got milk. So once you've done that, for five to ten minutes, you then roll your ball up like so. Just tuck it underneath, get rid of all the extra bits. Tuck it underneath, place it back in your bowl, cover it up and then leave that for around 30 minutes. Now this one I made actually a couple of hours ago and it's rested, it's almost like a bread dough. See it's risen, soft and it's risen quite nicely so you need to dig this out. Get a bit of flour on your bench. Just turn it to a rough triangle with your fingers. And then place that to one side. And then get your butter out, which is still hard actually from the fridge, which is the way you want it. Rolling pin. Gentle taps, don't smack it because the butter will go everywhere. <laughs> Just gentle taps. Now I'm using a um, an unsalted butter, you want quite a rich one. I mean, I use French butter traditionally, being sort of Danish and croissant, sort of French things really. And it just gives it a higher melting temperature, so you don't want it to melt too quick. So a decent butter is important. Tapping it out from the middle out again. Happy with that, leave that to one side. Get your dough back again and you want to use your rolling pin to roll it out to the length of this board, really. You'll see what I'm doing in a second. Again, make it sort of fairly rectangular. 
a little bit longer. That will do. And the reason why I shaped it like that, you'll note, get the butter, put it over the top of the dough, and it covers roughly two thirds of the dough. So that's basically what you're creating. You're creating a, a layer of butter on top of the dough. Neaten it up, fold over the exposed dough over half of the butter. Put your fingers in a little bit. And then the same again. So you want to roll this butter over the top of the other. So I've just made a little indentation and over the top. Bit of pressure on top of that. Turn it away from you. Tap, 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 tap. That spreads the butter evenly. And the middle, again, up. Middle down. And then gently roll it out. Now, because my board's slightly too small, I'm just shifting it around a little. See, I'm doing it in little motions. Move it up and down the dough till so you end up with a long rectangle. Now you've got the butter in it. At the moment you've got butter, dough. So you've got dough, butter, dough, butter, dough. That's right. So if I fold that over, a third of it again, and then over the top, like we've just done with the butter. Now you've got dough, butter, dough, dough, butter, dough, dough, butter, dough, dough. You've got a few, okay? So this, that's your first turn. That's what you call a turn. Make a little knock, knock in there to say that's been turned once and get your paper and all you do is just pop it in the fridge. So you need to pop that in the fridge for around, you want to go in the fridge for about half an hour. You just want to solidify that butter again because the butter's soft now. So you want to solidify the butter, bring it back out and then roll it out exactly as I've done then. Roll it out, a third over, a third on top of that. And you need to do that four times with a break of at least, at least 30 minutes between each fold or each lamination. Then the dough is ready to use. Now it needs to go into a fridge, cling filmed overnight preferably. So before you go to bed, nine, 10 o'clock, leave it in the fridge. When you wake up in the morning, you can go ahead and make your Danish pastries. But that is how you make a beautiful Danish pastry. Now in part two, I'm gonna show you what you can do with that Danish pastry. And we're gonna turn it some beautiful chocolate twists. Now, if you enjoyed this recipe, click subscribe, click like, and go and watch all my other recipes on my Paul Hollywood Easy Bakes channel on YouTube. Enjoy.